lunchtime today and come here to Natito Wine, where we left all of the work for the Joe Burgers. We decided we wanted some little bit more sort of uh, bit more space. Um, so I'm looking for a small holding uh, in 1980, 1990, early 1990. Uh, and then <coughs> once we moved on to the farm, which would maybe be two or three hectares, which turned out to be 37 hectares, uh, we realized that we bought into an area which has good potential for wine. Um, I had no understanding of making wine, I had no knowledge of making wine, but I certainly had interest in wine. I thought quite a big wine collection down from Johannesburg. That's a farm of the first vendors in 1992. Uh, and then uh, the, 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 the converted the tractor shed into a cellar in 1995 and made the first wine. Look, I think what's, what's fascinating about being in the wine business is that you get, it's definitely a seasonal business. So come harvest, it is about physically getting your hands dirty because uh, it is a very mechanical process. You know, you pick the grapes, you crush them and you get them in a tank and you work, 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 work with them and uh, there's a lot of physical work involved. And that's the first season, then we've got a season where we then get involved in the bottling of the wines and, and, and uh, getting the wines prepared for the market. And then the third season is, is, is getting the out of the market and selling them. What exactly does a winemaker do? Uh, besides tasting wine and keeping yeast happy, pretty much that's it. I think winemaking is a business. Um, a lot of the work, in, as, as I believe, is in the vineyard. The romance of wine is sometimes a bit of a myth, but I think it's sometimes something that uh, people with too much money try and follow up on. The idea is that we make wine in the vineyard, so you want to have perfect humidity vineyards, bear the, bearing the best fruits that you possibly can, and from there, all I have to do is bring it in at the right time and ensure that the yeast stay happy. Uh, and, and there are sometimes uh, people that are quite bad in the market because they have a profit margin. It's not something that's easy and, and, and uh, just full of romance and all the things that go with it. It's a business. And if you run it well, you make money. If you don't run it well, you're not going to make money. I'm a final year viticulture and enology student, and that means that I study how to make wine, and viticulture is kind of like farming for vines. So, um, old world wine and old world wine production, as I understand it, tends to focus a lot on terroir and the influences of heterogeneity among terroir units. I think if one looks at the wine growing conditions in places like North Italy and France, um, the weather can be very much more uncertain and very much more unpredictable. I think old world winemaking and new world winemaking are different and uh, I think that in their own rights they offer the consumer different things. Generally, the new world would tend to make wines that are easier drinking, earlier drinking, more fruit driven, things like that. If one makes reference to the old world, invariably that refers to the countries of Europe, um, in particular in our context, that of France. Uh, the, the French are, are, are also starting to catch up on, on to that, that what people are looking for are more easy drinking, fruity wines that are more accessible. Um, old world is very traditional, traditional, whereby new world is very innovative in terms of producing fresher wines. As new world uh, wine production tends to focus on scientific processes and um, advanced techniques in order to, to make the best product possible. You know, the old style winemaking that they, they had in France, in my opinion, where you had to have the wine in the bottle for 20 years before it was approachable to keep a bottle of wine for 20 years. So I think that there's a probably convergence happening there. Uh, there's an enormous amount of research happening in France and, and, and as is in America and South Africa um, to try and improve the quality of wine. Uh, I know the French wouldn't do that research if they think we could make better wine for them. So, uh, I think there's a problem. And I mean, that doesn't really, you know, uh, preclude the fact that there's an enormous tradition in France about how wine was made. And I don't know whether you know that in France, you either studied in France or you learned from your father, otherwise, you're not allowed to make wine in France that will preserve some of those old sort of types of, of, of wine making that maybe are a bit different. But I think the French also don't understand that you have to make wines that are more accessible, more fresh, more different, and more fruit driven.